commentary comes from Wayne Model and Rod Stutt. What an incredible night lies ahead. At the start of this campaign, Simon Whitlock was a 200 to 1 outsider, the kind of price not seen since Wayne Mardle was <laughs> gracing the Premier League. Michael Smith, a 66 to 1. No hoper. Incredible to see them both at the top of the table. First and second, Whitlock ahead by virtue of his greater leg difference over the bully boy. Good Narvand, Wayne. Good Narvand. Yeah, Simon Whitlock is his trait so far in this Premier League has been his finishing. Over half the legs he's won have been won with two or three <laughs> dark combination finishes. That's incredible. Michael Smith has now become an opportunist. The taker of chances. <laughs> but still a hitter of maximums. As he has always been since bursting onto the scene. Apart from last week. <laughs> Apart from last week. <laughs> yes, Daryl Gurney, top of the uh, maximum charts at the moment, with 14 in the Premier League in 2018. Treble 20 leaves tops. 60. That leaves 60. Simon leaves the 170 as often as MVG. Doesn't get it as often mine, but another one of those. Wow, well, well, cracking well, setup. Top of the table. Wow. Double ten. Two missed darts at double for Michael Smith could be very costly. Simon Whitlock has three in his hand and looking at double eighteen. Oh, he squeezes it into the corner. But Simon any part of the double will do, and Whitlock Kate breaks Martin. throw. Yeah, Simon topping the double conversion Ooh. rate charts. 56%, very good over his first three matches. This is fourth. Nice. He's worked so hard on his game. As they all do, but to go through the doldrums like he did takes some doing. There's a lot of players that never get it back. 60. You're just nodding your head, Rod. What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I'm out frozen. Nothing in particular. Whitlock with three wins out of three, the same as Smith. And the real biggies still to follow. Important to keep making hay where well, the, uh, the sun shines for Simon Whitlock and Michael Smith. Whitlock with wins over Cross and Mensah Sivovic, Raymond Van Barneveld. So still the likes of Anderson and Van Gerwen lying in wait in the first round of fixtures. Disappointed with that after the first start. Well, he's in control of this leg, Michael Smith. He was in control of the last one, don't forget. Likes to leave double ten whenever he can. His dart's going at a slight angle, so if he misses on the outside, it opens it up for him. Well, he'll do well to leave double ten from 48. <laughs> Watch him go eight and then single 20. Oh. Welcome back. It's Michael Smith against Simon Whitlock. Both men looking to maintain their 100% records in the league. Smith in pole position as we rejoin the action with Rod Studd and Wayne Martin. Looking a lot smoother this week at the start than he did last week. It was so cold last week in Newcastle. The venue was, was freezing. Well, the dart certainly warmed up and it was red hot by the time Van Gerwen and Anderson strutted their stuff on the stage as the crowd give Michael Smith some good natures booing after stopping short of the nine dart bid. 58. 
But he's in control of this leg. In fact, he's been, he's been in control of all three, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, good thinking. Yeah, he's just outscored Simon. Simon may start in the 19s. Looking for another. Oh, he's left a big fish again, Rod. Well, will it be left in the water? No, it's it's there. It's there for him. His uh, previous attempt at it stalled early on. Can he at least get a shot at the ball this time? No. Yeah, Michael Smith is just... Been a bit ropey the last six starts. He was massively in control of this leg. He's, he's on tops now. Oh, that's cracking. That really is. That's where he's been better. He just doesn't... It doesn't wilt like he used to, Michael Smith. When things are not going his way, he used to drop his shoulders and just show a bit of petulance, but now he's in for the fight, isn't he? Well, well, having lost the first leg on his own throw, having spurned a couple of darts at double top, in fact, they're the only two darts that have been missed at double in the match, Smith has come roaring back to win legs two and three. And now he's in front in leg four, so things Three's going the way six. of the young man from St Helens. And if he does win this match, he will go two points clear at the top of the Premier League and be certain to be top of the table when we leave here and head for Exeter. Yeah. Yeah, in Smith's debut year, he only won one match from nine. That was against Barney in Exeter. And that's who he's playing next week, in Exeter. Well, who'd have thought it? Who'd have thought it, eh? Who? 134. Another leg, another leg where Smith comprehensively outscoring the Aussie. Yeah, it's been a tail all the way through. He has an average of 13 points higher than his Antipodean 85. adversary. Why do we require 82? Oh, bull or treble 14. 17 now for tops. 42. So we require 142. A few ways to go here. Could go 51. Looking at the 60. He'll stay there. Bitterly disappointed. It was a pearler of a marker in that 60 for him. Double 10, which he adores. Well, 3 1 to the bully boy and has the darts again. And after that first leg, Simon Whitlock is not featured in this match. He's been a spectator. As Michael Smith has just raced away with the next three legs. Whitlock has had not had a dart at double since that opening leg. He's not thrown exactly wayward, but he's just lost the lost the weight of the dart. He's hitting a lot of 58s and 60s. Well, this now becoming an important leg for Simon Whitlock. 42. Well, he effectively had the throw, but he seems intent on handing it straight back to Smith. Who seems intent on giving it back to Whitlock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Simon now constantly going low on that that 20 for a change at the 57 first dart. Yeah, to go 4-1 down, not insurmountable. We've seen greater comebacks than that, but with the third maximum, Michael Smith leaves a finish. So his first down to a finish. Every time. 92. Michael require 57. Nope. 58. Made a bit of a so mess of that. Now this is a real chance. A real chance. 
Trouble 20 needed to leave top. Ramsey's done that, so Smith will only get one dart at double at best. Oh, he stayed there for double 13! Wow, what a fabulous finish! The lie was perfect for the dart to the treble 20, and then the finish on a obscure double. Tom plus out with Whitlock waiting on tops. Instinctive darts from Michael Smith. Read the line of situation perfectly, knew exactly what he was going to do. Didn't think about it, just did it. Don't put thoughts there. Simon just cannot, cannot find the weight on a constant basis. When he's going high, he can't work his way in. When he's going low, he's switching his good poor. Needs to find something. Otherwise, it could be an early night for him. Remember, Smith and Whitlock. Neither have been beaten yet in this Premier League. Neither have dropped a point yet. What's going to give? Well, it looks as though Whitlock's... 100% record is going to be the first to go. It will go as soon as Michael Smith, if Michael Smith gets to six legs. To guarantee himself at least a share of the spoils. Hasn't hit one tonight yet a maximum. He has now! Well, I've been really impressed with Michael Smith as well as his ability to, to close out so far in this Premier League. He hasn't mucked around when he's got to the finishing line, that's for sure. Now, this could be a tied turner. 51 ball now. He's just making a mess of everything, isn't he? It's the 180 and then that. Well, this would be a real hammer blow. Double 14. Oh, wrong double. Double five. Which he's missed. What do you fancy, Simon? Treble 14. Double 12 now. Oh, what a pinch. Simon well, Seven believe it or believe it not, because he's on the wrong end of the scoreline, Simon Whitlock has not missed a dart at double in the match. That's because he's only <laughs> had two. <laughs> yeah, but still. It just shows you. Sometimes people like you, Wayne, say, well, you don't lose many matches with a 100% record at doubles. <laughs> you could get beat 7-2 here. <laughs> <laughs> he's hanging in. That's all he can do, and both the legs he's won, as Smith is unlucky with the bounce out, both the legs he's won, Michael Smith has had a couple of darts at double to win them. Yeah. He missed 60 in the first leg, and then... One man up, 40. And double 14, and then double nine. Double, double five, five, sorry, nine. after it, and double nine. This game started off for Michael Smith quite... I know he lost the first leg, but he started off in blistering fashion. That's all kind of tapered off a bit. Wow. Is the tungsten tide turning here in Berlin? Leaves a level ton, Vara circuitous route and Smith will need at least two trebles here not that one though but he slowed down Michael Smith has slowed down the the instinctive play that we saw just two three legs ago has gone double ten Probably won't be of critical importance. Should get another three. Will get another three. And that will close to within a leg here, Simon Whitlock. When he was looking like being on the wrong end of a caning here. Could have been 5-1 down. Can he get back to 4-3 behind? Yes, he can. 
I do like the way Simon uses markers. Put a dart above double five. And then move to one side so the, the next would clatter into it. Very good, very good indeed. Well, Michael Smith took out 106 to go 4-1 up. He then missed two darts at double to go 5-1 up. Lost the fifth leg, uh, sorry, the sixth leg, lost the seventh leg, and Whitlock now with the darts to tie it up in probably. Yep. 58. But a funny old game, as they say. Do they really? <laughs> yes. He's... Well, it has become a very edgy affair now, hasn't it? Yeah, there's a bit of panic setting in with Michael now, and we haven't seen that as yet. He had a bit of a swagger in the early phase. Well, two treble or three treble visit would be marvellous for Michael. Oh, there you go. That's his fourth. Well, that is a possible game changer. It's certainly a leg changer because Whitlock was looking odds on to level. And now he's two darts away from going 5 3 behind all of a sudden. And then Smith would have the throw for a potential point. Not a good last start. Walked with it. Does Simon fancy himself to the 54? The answer is no. 19 or treble. What a marker for the bullseye! Oh my! How unfortunate! I'm sure, that was off the wire. Well, it was off the wow. meat of the middle, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, one for double four. Oh, Thank goodness. Simon, you require 50. Well, he still wants the ball. He won't be repeating that strategy. He's going to get two at double 16. Goodness me, that was close to the treble. Too close for comfort. And these are not close Thank enough you, by any stretch. Michael, you require four. Got to compose himself here and does. Got to throw firm. Who's and does. Quality Smith. dart, that. Nine leg, Michael to throw first. Eight legs played. Hey, Michael Smith has had clear darts to win seven of them. Simon's been hanging on. Really has, but now it's Michael. One He's within, hopefully, hopefully, another six darts of wrapping up a point. Come on, the nine. One oh, It's the ninth leg. Five of them have featured a Michael Smith Max. 91. Simon Whitlock has it a nine data in the Premier League 2012. In fact, of the current crop of players in it, he was the last one to do it. One. Adrian Lewis with the two most recent is not in this year's. He could not get that up and over. He does leave the 170. But there's a glimmer here for Whitlock. Oh, that's it, just it, shut the curtains on that. Yeah, there's what, sorry. It, wow. It's gone dark. He's been watching 25. the Mardle guide to how to play. Oh, there's a glimmer of light which turned into a total eclipse. Go on, then. Wow. He was right to go for it, surely. No, he wasn't. Of course he was. Of course he was. Who wants to see anyone lay up? He's coming back for two darts at double ten, isn't he? Mind you, he'd probably rather now, at this moment in time, be coming back for three at tops anyway. Oh, and he gets their last dart in hand. Michael Smith, tenth leg, Simon at front first. Came on. Stats galore, wasn't there, being uh, bandied about? before play, including the last dart in hand doubling from our friend Wikipedia. And uh, Peter Wright 
was top of the table for last start in hand doubling, and Michael Smith was second in the Premier League players. With uh, around about 44% of his last start in hand throws hitting the requisite target. 59. Composure. And he added to that statistic there in a very important double 10. 94. Good switch. Pressure massively on Simon now. the eight in the match so far make that nine oh, wow, come on you let me down pal nine uh, treble 20 94 these tops smith will be aiming to leave the same target won't do so 60 so i'm going to require 40. Oh, got to go. Smith loitering on 120. 30. You feel he's going to get a dart for the two points here, don't you, and for the win. It's a dart at double top. Can he see enough of it? 80. Could just see the top part of the bed, but couldn't find it. Now, Whitlock cannot afford to miss. He has hit this once in the match. Goodness me, Sam. Oh, dear. That really is a catastrophe. Yeah, it was a real poor release. Panicky dart. Panicky dart. Closer. Closer and in. Michael Smith pulls off a 7-3 victory over Simon Whitlock here in Berlin. He remains top of the pile. Unbeaten, four play, four one, four smashed. Simon Whitlock was top, not anymore. Michael Smith, bully boy. Commentary for this one comes from Rod Harrington and Nigel Pearson. Forty. It is a huge game for both these players, particularly for Mensa Sullivan, Rod Harrington. It is. I mean, I must admit, when we looked at the league before we started, we'd never put Mensa as being at the bottom. The first two weeks, over 100 averages, but just got, he's been hit with players playing at the top of their form. But what's happening now, Nige, the pressure is on him. You know, you don't want to get relegated, so Fifty now... Five. And he's never really been in this sort of position before. He's just used to go up there and just throw darts. Now he's under the pressure. Of course, you have to say that it's, it's his home crowd here, which Nine is a bit of extra pressure. Yeah, very much so. Fluent uh, German. Uh, Sullivich speaks. And he really is a gentle giant. Mensur, no question about that. But who would have thought it? Michael Smith, four wins out of four. Mensur Sullivich, three defeats out of three. Big game here then for these two in Berlin tonight. It's a poor second dart from Gowen Price, but a good recovery from the Welshman there. It's going back to that tweet uh, of him doing the try. I did tweet saying, lucky I weren't chasing him. He'd probably give me a ticky back to the try line after that. 100. <laughs> but it, it, he has got this grit and determination from that life. You, you know, he never gives up. And that's where he's got the two draws from. I mean, he was 5-1 down to Daryl Gurney last week 43. and ground out the draw. Yeah, determined character. Played a bit of rugby league as well along the way. Both codes of the game. Solievich now looking to set himself up for an opportunity against the throw here in this first leg. Oh, Scrappy leg, it has to be said so far, but a very tense leg of darts, which is understandable. And the Solievich is going to be... Eighty. Looking for the finish here for a 86. break of throw in the first leg. 86 needed for the big Austrian. Treble 18 would leave double seven. Needs a ball. Oh, and the ball it is. That will settle this him down. Huge. What a great finish. Leg, to throw His home crowd has Game nothing on. 
better than to get off of the start like that and a break of throw from Sulovic. Yeah, what a start to the match for Sulovic there. 70. Champions League of Darts winner, of course, Cardiff. First Premier League campaign for both these players. Not playing as regularly as some of the others, Mensur. Missing uh, plenty of floor tournaments along the way. 140. Yes, I know it's harder for him to tra always keep travelling to Europe for the, the Pro Tour events as we just see Pricey miss the 180. He ducked out of the UK Opens, but do you know what, Nige? They're so good to sharpen you up. Michael Van Gerwen plays them, and that's why he's, he helps him be number one. Just keeps that edge, and I think that Mensa's lost the edge. Lost the edge, but he hits the 180. Right on cue. Mensa Silivich, first one of the game. Nice cover from Gerwin Price. Now, can Silivich double his lead here? Will he start with a treble 19? He goes for treble 20. 19 would leave double 16 here. There's the 19. Needs double 16 for a two leg lead. No problem. No problem. Mensa Silivich, 2 0 up. Wasting no time. Price now with a couple of draws under his name so far. Looking to stay in the match here. Well, that's Sulovic we're so used to. Want? Two out of two on his doubles. And that's where he's been letting himself down, Nigel. I mean, those first two matches he had, over 100 averages, and everybody else was throwing everything at him by the kitchen sink. But Nine he was also six. missing doubles at crucial times, them odd darts. But tonight, it looks like Gerwin Price is going to be in one big match. 45. Yeah, again, poor from Gerwin Price. Just hasn't got it together at all. Now, this is a good start from Sulevic, who we mentioned the UK Open qualifiers he sat out. Players' Championships as well, picking and choosing, Mensa Sulevic. This is better from Price. 140. Looked a bit quicker there as well, didn't he? What a crowd here in Berlin. Magnificent venue. Yes, we still on that stage at the top of the show, Nides. That was an incredible feeling. 12,000 as we see Price. Oh, he just keeps 40. Just dipping on that last dart. He's just got to keep his height, keep his fluency with the last dart. Yes, it really is remarkable when you come to a venue like this. We've said it over the last few years as well about Leeds and Dublin and the huge arenas we go to. When you go back to the very, very start of the Premier League. Look back at some of the venues we were at then. 25. And look at it now, it's remarkable. Sulevic now hits 17, needs double 14 for another break of throw. One dart in hand for double seven. 31. What a miss. So you, you don't see Sulevic miss the 14s too often, but he's let Gerwin Price in. It will be a hold of throw, and it is a hold of throw. Welcome back to week four of the Premier League, and here in Berlin, it's Mensur Sulevic against Gerwin Price. Both men looking for vital points in the league. Sulevic with the advantage. Commentary from Rod Harrington and Nigel Pearson. 45. Just the 1 180 in this match so far. Whoever wins this, if one of them indeed does win it. It will have been a grind-out situation. Digging deep. Plenty of room for another there. One Second 180 nine. for Mensa Sulevic. Even if Mensa does win this, 96. him and Gerwin Price are still going to be chasing. Will not be relegated. And 100 average for Sulevic, which is excellent darts, Nige. I mean, and he has been playing like this. It's just those missed doubles, as he did in the previous leg. I mean, you can count on one hand how many times he misses double 14 in a year. Absolutely. 
99. Silovic averaging 103 here. Six starts from this point. Price not on a finish. He's got the first treble 20. 16s. Well, he's going to be back anyway. He's single 20, so in a good position now for tops when he returns. And it does look from here as though the big Austrian, Mensa Silovic, is about to go three legs to one up. Three one up. It is straight in the middle. Those 14s, four nil up, would have been going price but he's been here so many times going price as I said earlier on 5-1 down to Daryl Gurney last week and ground out a draw however he is going to be on the wrong end of a hide and if he doesn't start to find some big scores going price 100 well the tournament average this is week four Sullivan's averaging a ton in the tournament week four and he's bottom of the table can you believe it how does that happen? Well, well, well. 36 140s as well, Nodge. I mean, that's an incredible amount of 140s. Like you say, and yet he hasn't put a point on the board. 12 from 33 at the finish before tonight for Sulevich. And this is wayward again from Gerwin Price, who 40. probably feels like he's swimming against the tide right now. Sulevich, a big score here would put huge pressure on Price. One more break of throw, and Gerwin Price will be deep in trouble. But as you said, Rod, he's been here before. He's quite a strong character, as we know. Yes, the only problem is, Nigel, that keep leaving it too late. You're not always going to get out of the jail, are you? It's, all, it's going to come back and bite you. And tonight may be that night. Lovely second dart, the way he just went above oh, it. Lovely dance from Mensa Sulevich, the way the first dart lay just below the treble 20, and he used it superbly, didn't he, to just 60. get the two treble 20s on top 80. of that, and that has left Sulevich a finish here now. Double 19 for 4-1. 4-1 it is, he's taken out 111, now 118. And Sulevic has Six finally found those Europa. doubles. And it was another Eight. break of throw, two breaks of throw to the big Austrian. And I don't think he's going to let it go from here. 140. There he goes, superb with a 140. He's taken out, as Rod mentioned there, two ton-plus finishes. And is Mensa Sulevic on the verge of his first 85. ever Premier League points? here tonight. Debut Premier League campaign. Was heavily linked with it last year, of course. And it's uh, widely known that very much a family man, Mensa. 140. As we mentioned the uh, travelling element about why he's missing out on some of the floor tournaments. 55. Certainly a man who tries to get his life very much in perspective as much as possible. This is nice again. What an average for Sulevich here. 100. Yes, another brilliant display by Mensa. And he really has got going under the cosh. 140. He's yet to hit a 180 price. He's going to have to find a few and up the 140s as well. He's going to be back anyway. Sulevic, Price not on a finish again here. Sulevic moving 78. Slack first start from Price. Crowd enjoying this. Three more games 85. to come after this one as well. Sulevic for 5-1. It's a long way back for one of Price's comebacks from there. There's the treble 18. Needs double 12. No problem. Super finishing from Mensa Sulevic. Five out of seven. That's 71% checkout rate. Very, very impressive. He's up at 103 average, and his tournament average remains at 100.2, and he's bottom of the table, but he's looking good for his first point at least tonight, probably two. Yeah, great display. 
Spice has been 5-1 down in both of the times he's got the draw, but I can't see him in that draw this evening. Mensa looks just too solid, doesn't he? Scoring good, 6-1-40s, 2-1-80s. Five out of seven on his double. Oh, and I said Price no, needs to hit to 180s. Is that the start? Well, there's the 180. Is that the spark that we've seen before? Where Gerwin oh, Price reaches peak performance when he's 5 1 down. Nice use of cover for the treble oh, 19s. Good dance there from Gerwin Price. This would be for a hold of throw, of course. Bear that in mind, he could take an 11 dart leg here. Price, but uh, small steps and all that when it comes to recovery. Needs tops. There you go, He's middle of the bed. The leg. Yeah, a tidy Price. 11 Gerwin dart leg Gerwin with the throw. Gamer. Now he needs to find an 11 dart leg against the throw. That's what going Price has got to do. He's just leg on leg. Don't worry about the next leg, just right. Let's just concentrate on this one. That's a first great dart. Needs to find a 140. Tons are not going to be good enough against the throat. Solivic, 106.2 average. Goes anywhere near that. He will not let Price off the hook. And he's not doing it, is he? Lovely 140. That's his ninth of the match. And if Solivic wins this leg... He will not be beaten by Gerwin Price tonight. Price would have to win four on the bounce to peg him back for a point. Very much advantage, Sulevic here then. Match two tonight. Beautifully oh, done! Three no, 180s nice. so far for Mensah Sulevic, averaging 109.34. 59, Mensah, you require One of the most unorthodox throws we've ever seen in darts. This is for an 11 dart to match the 11 darts that Price did. He's going to get another handful if he doesn't take this out, but he does. That's a 12 dart leg and guarantees Mensah Silovic's first point of the Premier League this year. First Premier League point of his career, Mensah Silovic. So, all the pressure now on Price to save this. Just the one more leg needed for the big Austrian here. 84. To get his first win on the board. And then it makes it all very interesting down the bottom. 97. We move on for week five in Exeter next Thursday. Pressure will really be mounting then. At the bottom of the table. 140. Defeat here and go and Price would be well and truly in the mix, along with Silivic. 140. A steady 140, even if he holds his throw here. Silivic still the clear favourite to tidy this up. Yes, and Gary 16. Anderson and Peter Wright, one of those could be still in the mix and fighting for relegation. With Michael Smith and Simon Whitlock doing as well as what they have done early on in the league this year, it really has put what, what we would say the big boys down at the bottom. Well, it's an added element, isn't it, since the Premier League went up to 10 players and then Judgment Night came along. 100. Just adds when pressure and adds intrigue people. to this wonderful, wonderful Thursday night drama. Tops for Price. Can he use that as a marker? 44. He's dropping that door. A dart ruined his rhythm. So now two ton plus finishes for Sulevic. Can he take out the 117 to clinch two points? He's oh. going to get one dart, a double top. Oh, and it's only just in the 17, Nige. Tops for the match, oh, stick below it there, seven. but... Oh, you oh, I just wonder 20. if that slack second dart focused his concentration. So, Gerwin right. Price gets There's a third leg on the board. And Silivic knows on. that he could have been home and dry by now, but he's got the darts here, he's got the throw. And what a lovely start, lovely way to start, a leg where hold your throw and you get your first win on the board. 140. Lovely ton 40, Rod. That's the 11th of the match. 140s, 3, 180s. A good display, still over the 106, but just under the 107 average for Sulevic.
Six out of ten on the double, sixty percent. All in all, if he finishes Warm. off here nicely, we have it over 107 now, or just under 106. I keep messing us about there. Um, <laughs> it, you know, that would go down as one of the, the better performances, I'm sure, of the evening. Fifth, I know we've got yes. Michael Van Gogh and then Gary Anderson, the big treble 20 hitters coming up later. But a good, solid performance. Yeah, bottom of the table. I repeat, bottom of the table before tonight. 100. Mensa Sulevic, 106.5 average, two ton plus finishes. Six out of ten at the finish, three one eighties. Look at this from Price. One hundred and forty. He's uh, not going away quietly, is he? Sulevic now with a one one eight and a one one one. A one six one would be some party piece to take out this match. He just needs to find a treble, which he has. I go twenty five. One hundred thirty six. Fifty six. Sorry. It's been a long time since I played Norwich. <laughs> That's a sensible shot. It's guaranteed him two darts on the double instead of possibly one. 56. Solivic then to take out the match. There's the 16. He's got two darts in hand. He needs tops. Eight. Tops he gets Just and Mensa Solivic, the big Austrian, the gentle, has just secured his first Premier League win. Confirmation. Mensa Solivic seven. Gerwin Price three. And a big sigh of relief and a big, big smile from the big man. Commentary for this match comes from Rod Harrington and Rod Studd. Yes, yeah, the big man on the stage at the biggest venue in Berlin. 12,000 come to see Michael Van Gerwen play tonight. After that blockbusting performance against Gary Anderson last weekend, he will move into second spot on the league ladder with a victory here. Michael Smith will end the evening top. Whatever happens now. And Daryl Gurney, who squandered match-winning opportunities last week against Gerwin Price and prior to that against Raymond Van Barneveld. Well, when you haven't got a win in your debut season, Rod, it's hardly a hand-picked opponent, is it, Michael Van Gerwen? No, when he was 5-1 up wow. against Gerwin Price last week and, and just let it go, didn't he? And the last thing you need is to walk into Michael Van Gerwen, who, at a fresh venue, who wants to really impress. And, uh, as Wayne mentioned, it's the doubling that's cost him. Oh, double ten now for the first leg on the wire. That would have been some finish in this first leg. Well, Michael Van Gerwen is just on 120 average. I know it's only the first leg, but it's still quite impressive. Can he finish off the leg in 13 darts? He can indeed. And Gerwin takes the lead, yes. Well, if anything underlined the old adage of trebles for show, doubles for dough, it's Daryl Gurney in the first three weeks in the Premier League. He tops the 180 stats, he's hit 14, and yet, as Wayne was just saying, he's missed 40 darts at double and is going out at 29%. 58. The, the thing is about the Premier League and we've seen it with so many players over the years because you are playing one of the best players in the world every single Thursday well that's the first 180 of the night his 15th of the Premier League as I was saying because you're playing one of the best players in the world you're not getting a, a bit of an easier draw a lucky draw you're getting hammered every Thursday and that pressure just compounds week in week out And if you don't take winning opportunities, the pressure just gets ratcheted up week on week. Well, Daryl Gurney has left the Michael Van Gerwen signature shot. Will it be the petard shot? Will he be hoist by it here, Van Gerwen? No, he can't find the first requisite treble, but Van Gerwen, look what he's left. Well, it's not Premier League darts, it's 170 hitting darts. Could be the uh, PDC equivalent of 2020 cricket, Rod. Just start every leg on 170. Well, Gary Anderson might want to do that after last week. Well, that's not a bad guide for Daryl Gurney. Oh, now hit those barrels and surely he's going to find the double 18. He's underpitched. And as we said, his doubling has been very costly. Extremely costly for Daryl Gurney. He finds himself 2 0 down. Now, is he going to start thinking of, of that? I've missed again, I've missed again, and all of a sudden, Michael Van Gerwen will now throw a 12 or 13 dart leg, and all of a sudden, he's 3 0 down. Well, it was a microcosm of his entire season, that leg, because he hit a 180 in it and then missed three clear darts at double 18. And that's just 
epitomizes what Daryl Gurney's Seven been doing. Seasons. He's played well in and amongst, but his finishing has just been desperate. Well, he's average, isn't he? Wow. Michael Van Gurney. Gurney at 98. Normally, we would say that's pretty tidy, but with Michael Van Gerwen just topping the 123, wow. well, just under the 124. Yes, he's currently sitting on a world record average. Might as well throw that in early doors. 96. 123.4 against Michael Smith at the G Oil and Gas last year. 85 left when he comes back. I think he followed it up the following week with about 116 or 118, but 85 to make it. He's just going to set it up. Didn't have to go to bullseye route. And now Daryl Gurney, at least six darts. I used to hate hit on the 180 when it was going to be wasted. Now Michael Van Gerwen for a 3 0 lead. Wow. Careless from MVG. But Daryl Gurney has got about, well, I was going to say a quarter chance, it's probably about a sixteenth of a chance of hitting that. And Van Gerwen here will get two more at double to go three zip up. Double two. That's four darts at double he's missed in this leg, and that is five! Do you know what, Rodders, when he Harry missed the tens, I know a few players that, even though Gurney was a 164, may have busted that to come back with tops. But Gurney, to, yes, his first leg on the board, and he's nicked, really stolen that leg off of Van Gerwen. Well, that was piracy on the dartboard, wasn't it? Van Gerwen missing five darts at double. 93. Six effectively because he had to use another one to split the five he'd left. So two visits on a single dart finish. 98. Wasted by the world number one and defending champ. The thing of that is Daryl's got to make some, wow. something of that bit of luck. It's no good nicking the leg and then just not doing anything with it. He's got the throw, got to hold on to his throw. 59. His first dart's just not giving him a good enough guide. It's too high. And he's pulling them low. Well, remember, towards the end of the second leg, and admittedly it was early doors, Van Gerwen was averaging just under 124. He's averaging 97 now. We've only played a leg and a half since then. Wow, right on, Fulton. The mishmash of mediocrity on the doubles in the end of the third leg and now a fairly ordinary start to this one scoring wise from the Premier League champ this is more like it yes a raise of the eyebrow from Van Gerwen where did it disappear to it's resurfaced well, one minute you thought Gurney had this in the palm of his hand and now Michael Van Gerwen to find that third leg Double 16 for a 3 1 lead, yes, and he stole play. the leg back. A 106 Two check three. out from Michael, Michael Van Gerwen, and he is back Game in control. On. Well, as quickly as it had disappeared, he found it again, didn't he? He just mislaid it down the back of the sofa somewhere, and just, oh, there it is. His A game returned. Van Gerwen has a sequence of 26 consecutive Tom Plus averages on television. Dating back to November 2017. Wow. His average at the moment is just a shade under the three figures. But he leads 3-1 in any regard. Two maximums and that 106 finish. 96. I must admit, I, I was sitting at home watching that match between Van Gerwen and Gary Anderson wow. last week. And Did you enjoy it, Rodney? Yes, extremely. <laughs> I mean, even I leapt out of the seat when uh, Gary Anson hit the 170. I thought that was magnificent. You, know, you miss a nine-part leg and you don't go back to the board. That's just no. Yes, it was. No, it shouldn't happen. Remarkable, wasn't it? Yeah. Rarely seen the like of a leg like that as Daryl Gurney hits his second maximum. One 
Gerwin warmed up after that win over uh, Gary Anderson with a couple of tour wins in minor events. So he trousered another 20 grand for a weekend's work. That's where he keeps his edge. Those tour events, he loves them. And now double 16 for a 1 1 1, but he's wide. Important two dark combination for the Irishman. Double ten to come back within one leg. Double five. And you feel those are big, big misses in the context of this darts match. Yes, Knuckles is not going to let him off again. He just doesn't look. Daryl Gurley just doesn't look like he's going to hit them, does he? Now at the moment. He's fumbling for finishes and 57. lacking confidence on the outer ring, which is a real chink in any darts player's armour. Well, the walk-up there said it all when he wow, had a visit with Adam Treble. It was a little bit of a, a swalk up there, wasn't it? I don't know what's going on. I can't find it. That's where you've got to get motivated. Perhaps this will get him going. One Number three. For Gurney. Gurney has won ten of his last... 11 matches against Gurney. But when you're struggling on doubles, the other players sniff it, don't they, Rodney? They can smell it and they know that your confidence is just that little bit brittle. Well, especially Van Gerwen, because you know as soon as you're down to a double, he's going to be thereabouts. And this is exactly what I mean. Gurney has scored really well in this match and all of a sudden he's got to take out 124. Wants a bullseye. 99. Well, that's a sixth dart at bull or double that he has missed in this match. And Van Gerwen takes out the 47 by a double 16 and leads 5 1 with a double break and has the darts in the seventh. And punishing, punishing darts from the Premier League champion. The Odds on favourite to win this title for the fourth time and trouser another quarter of a million pounds 96. in the process. Plus yeah. the bonus for league leadership he'd be favourite for as well, Rod. Yes, I think that's 25,000. I think he's going to trouser as you phrase it. A lot more money over the next year because you know, he's going to start a red hot favourite for every single tournament. Oh, I certainly wouldn't mind being a tenner behind him. In fact, I wouldn't mind being 10 grand behind him. By the end of his career, I suspect I wouldn't mind being 10 million behind him. Well, it's nice to see Michael's putting a bit back as well. He'll be at the academy, the Steve Brown's academy next Wednesday. He endorses all that and putting money into it as yes, well, which is great. It. Yes, and that's a great point, Rod. Yeah, he, he enjoys it and he sees it as part of his role as the world's number one player to promote and endorse it. Well, he, he said he come through the youth system that learned him how to win and so he wants to uh, he's actually said i want to find the next michael van gerwin the other players don't want him to do that but oh. uh, he will go for it and he misses it by millimeters to stay in the match really it's not going to happen Michael Van Gerwen, nine for double eight for a guaranteed one point on the board. One point it is. Still over the 105 average for Van Gerwen, 43% on doubles. A tidy performance up there with Mensa Sulovic, who beat Gerwen Price in the earlier match. Yeah, 106 average for Mensa. The third ton plus average of the event for the Austrian. And his first victory. General Gurney with a well, almost 100 average, but it's the missed darts at double that have caused the problems. One out of seven on the double for Daryl Gurney. Van Gerwen, six out of 14, but five of those misses were in one leg that he lost. One hundred and thirty-four. He's just relentless. Throw on throw is Michael Van Gerwen. Sixteen. Just like you know when everyone was playing Phil Taylor when he was dominating. You know you go 180, 140 as Gurney did him. A previous leg and not even get a dart on a double. In my day, you did that. You got half a dozen darts on the double runners. Oh, 
16. And it comes up dry again, and Van Gerwen now will be scenting a 7-1 success. And once he pulled clear mid-match, Van Gerwen has been in complete command, and Gurney has had no answer whatsoever. Oh, yes. Double 12 for our 1 4 1, a real ribcage rattler. Well, one of these days, I half expect to see Michael Van Gerwen go bull, bull, bull here. But not tonight. Well, Daryl Gurney needs to find his first up. He's going to miss it just above. No, straight in. Gets him another leg on the board, but this is probably one of the hardest tasks in darts today to try and find a draw when you're 6-2 down to Michael Van Gerwen. 96. Well, it's a little bit better than being 6-1 behind to Michael Van Gerwen, isn't it? It's all marginal, it's all relative. Only just. Wow. Well, it's a long way back from here. Don't mention the draw just yet. Well, if you look at the stats, Three 180s each. Van Gerwen's only one 140 up, and Gurney is a ton up. So if you take those stats, you wouldn't believe that Gurney is 6-2 down. However, you look at those two out of nine on the doubles, 22% for Daryl Gurney, and that's where he's lost a couple of legs early on at crucial times, and uh, very, very costly. Well, 170 left again. Lost count the number of times either Van Gerwen or Gurney has left this. Van Gerwen did wire the ball for the big fish earlier on in the match. Could he finish with it? Could he? No. The frustration for Van Gerwen. He cannot land the big fish to wrap up a 7-2 success. But it won't matter. Can he clean this up? to make it 7-2, an average in the region of 104. And he does just that, an average just shy of 104. 103 and change for the Premier League champion, a regulation win as he breezes past Daryl Gurney, who's still looking for his first victory in the 2018 Premier League. Commentary from Wayne Mardle and Nigel Pearson, but first, Dave Clark and Rod Harrington. Cross against Barney. Barney looked quite subdued as he made his way up there, Rod. He did, and last week in his match was as, as probably as bad as I've seen him for a few weeks or a few months. It was the old Barney shaking his head, he didn't get motivated. He's going to have to tonight because Rob Cross started off bad, but his win against Peter Wright last week has really got him onto a good run. Two tasty matches to round off the night. This one followed by Peter Wright against Gary Anderson. Oh, cracking two matches. This one, uh, this one's going to be very close, and so will the last one. I mean, the last one you've got two power scorers. Here you've got Barney, who's a legend. Everywhere he goes in the world, he's loved. Rob Cross, they don't really know who he is. They know he's won the World Championships, but he's not a legend like Barney. So uh, Barney may get the uh, tail end of the uh, crowd here. Wayne Mardell, Nigel Pearson in commentary for this one. Thank you, Dave. Yes, Rob Cross, the new generation, the new world champion, of course, and back to a bit of form. Rob, uh, interestingly, uh, more, more about him very shortly as we see Barney just uh, warming up here after his defeat to Simon Whitlock last week. But Rob Cross made the point. He felt that if the Premier League had have started uh, the week after the World Final, he would have been fine. That would have continued that type of form. But the, uh, the three to four week gap between the World Championship and uh, the next action and the Premier League, he believes, Rob Cross believes, it worked against him, Wayne. Well, it, it's never started a week after, so <laughs> come on, <laughs> if, as Bobby George would say, if he's off of life, son. I'm Rupert. just presenting what Rob has said. Yeah. Game yeah. off. But Barney has looked a short time on stage, just nonchalant, just a, a bit uncaring, maybe he'll... Will kick on now at the, the start of when he is game on because the wall Carnan just loitering around before the start. He was looked like he just oh, lacked a bit of focus. Yeah, there was no showmanship, was there? It was just uh, straight up there and just a, a wave to the crowd. And 
he's either got something on his mind or clearly he's just in uh, game mode as Rob Cross gets his 140. But yeah, it's uh, interesting where Barney is concerned because he does love playing to the crowd as well on the walk on many, many times. He is a legend, five times world champion against the new world champion here, Rob Cross. Yeah, he said he loves playing to the crowd. He doesn't love playing Rob Cross. Played three, Six, lost three. Lost to Rob in the Grand Slam in November. Big televised match, that one, before Rob was world champ. So. 100. But Rob, we, know, we knew what he could do before he won the world championship. And now you quite... Quite rightly said, Nigel. He's settled now and he's a different animal. He's not settled in this game, he's averaging 71. But... Early days, early days. But yes, uh, Rob Cross with a quite remarkable rise. Culminating in that World Championship victory and finally getting a Premier League win on the board last week. Like we've seen with Mensa Silivic tonight, getting his first Premier League win. Plenty of new faces in the Premier League this year. As Raymond van Barnevel, one of the more familiar faces, it's treble 18 and needs double 12. And no problem. Right it's a break of throw as well for Barney. Great stuff from Second Raymond van Barnevel. Barney looking to make a run at the playoffs, looking to reach it for the ninth time. Incredible. 60. Knows how to navigate his way through the league phase. He's never won it, but he's finished second five times. Some achievement, that. 180. Brilliant from Rob Cross. And uh, Raymond van Barneveld, an ever-present in the Premier League. 100. Since 2006. Really does have a, a great record, Barney, as you mentioned, Wayne. 57. Yeah, the crowd, there's 12,000 of them. I don't know what they're waiting for. I thought Barn, uh, Michael was going to be the catalyst for them to start 40. making a right old noise, but I've just seen that little bit subdued tonight. Maybe they're, they're kind of feeling out the, the atmosphere. Maybe they don't know how to react. Oh, oh react to that! Good recovery, this, from Rob Cross. Lost the first leg with the throw. Up at 105 average now, a couple of 180s. Looking good to level it at one leg apiece here now. 84 for the world champion. 18 for tops now. 44. He likes the 48-36 route, Rob. So here we go, Rob Cross tops to level this straight back at one apiece. Tops the target. Can he use that as a marker? Yes, he can. No problem that time. Welcome back to Berlin. Earlier on, Michael Smith continued his unbeaten run with victory over Simon Whitlock. Mensor Sulevich picked up his first points of the season at the expense of Gerwin Price. A resounding 7-2 scoreline for the reigning champion Michael van Gerwin over Dowell Gurney. On stage at the moment, the world champion Rob Cross is taking on the five-time world champion Raymond van Barneveld and rounding off the night the all-Scottish affair between Peter Wright and the two-time Premier League winner Gary Anderson. Time then to return to Cross against Van Barneveld. Commentary from Wayne Mardle and Nigel Pearson. Start the odds-on favourite for this match, Rob Cross. Does Barney like that lie? Well, I'm not sure Harry fitted another one in there. Brilliant dart from Barney. Yeah, when you look at the Premier League table, it really is. Every game has got something riding on it, of course, with the way the format is. Uh, big games coming up. Rob Cross faces Gary Anderson in Exeter next week. Barney faces the leader, Michael Smith. Four wins out of four for Bully Boy. First game tonight. Magnificent. 
So we see Silivic on two points, Cross on two, Price on two, Gurney on two, Gary's on two, Barney's on three. So it's all bunched up. 58. Looking to leave 170. Missed the treble. Kind of let Rob Cross back in now. Not. Well, not really making a hole in it. Barney, if he can hit two trebles in this visit, or three, three would be magnificent. Two would do. 140. That's if he gets a shot at 64, because this man can take out biggins. I'm just going the 54 route. I quite like that. Another break 55. of throw on the cards here. Maybe you require 64. Van Barneveld now needs 64. 16 would leave the double. He needs tops from here. 44. I'm not convinced Probably he meant that, eh? 96. When you're at the 16s, it's, it's easier to stay, unless you really are a tops lover like a, a James Wade. Oh, yeah. Loves double 18. Hold a throw, Rob. takes the lead. Rob Cross, two Rob legs to one here. And uh, again, when you look at the context of this match, as Barney peppers the treble. 140. 40 will do him, but yeah, a win here for Rob Cross would rocket him up the league table onto four points. And of Sullivich, Price, Gurney. Gary still to come. He'd go ahead of Barney as well, who's on three points so far. A win, a draw, and a defeat in this Premier League campaign. Terrific atmosphere here in oh, Berlin no. tonight. First time the Premier League has been here. Packed house, 12,000 for Premier League darts. Fantastic. 100. Barney ahead on the averages, but behind in where it counts, legs. 91. Leaves the big fish. There's been some quality darts, but some of it's been a bit, a bit slotty. The grouping's not been great. It's been inconsistent, hasn't it? Yeah, they're straight enough, but the grouping's been a bit off so far. Barney is brilliant at using a dart above or below the, the segment. Such a good thing to have. Terry Jenkins used to be good at that as well. The dart's just going at an angle where you can get Very under nice and above. 72. Brilliant. For a level game. Double 16. Well, that tells me that when he was on 64 in the last league, there's no way he went for the eight. 2-2. Two, two. Yes, and uh, sloppy. Sloppy when he went for the tops there, as you said, Wayne. It was the setup which let him down, but two apiece now. 140. And double 16. Doing the trick for Barney. Which way is this game going to go from here? On a knife edge right now. 100. Two legs apiece. One break of throw apiece. And for the context of the league table, a big game for both. 100. I don't know what Barney was doing as Rob Cross was throwing. He's, look, he's rummaging through a wash bag or something. <laughs> 100. <laughs> Interesting description. Concentrate, Barney. Rather than pulling out the shower gel. Steady from uh, the world champion. Barney well behind here, so... 60. Rob Cross doesn't have to take this out right now. It's a one six one that he needs. Brilliant setup. 48 to leave the 36. All Barney can do is leave 61. Wow. 
Well, the three previous darts weren't much closer than that either. Really sloppy. So double 18 for Cross. Takes the lead, three next to two. So, Rob Cross halfway to ensuring that he will not be beaten by Van Barnevelt. Has Barney got now to peg it back here? One treble is the answer. This is nice from Cross. 140. 2 180 so far, both from uh, Rob Cross. Barney up at 93.7 with his average, but just not in 60. top gear, is he? No. No, like I said, the grouping hasn't been great, but that can change. 99. Raymond van Barneveld, of course, the 2014 Premier League champion. Beat Michael van Gerwen 10-6 in the final four years ago now. Well, I'm not 100% here. I'll have to have a look. Let's have another look. But I'm I feel quite sure that Barney has changed darts within the last two throws. That wash bag that I alluded to... He's got shower gel and darts. Shower gel, darts and, a, and an energy tablet in there. Tops now. Oh, yes. Vintage Van Barneveld that time, levels it at three apiece. Superb with 112 finish. Raymond Van Barneveld. Yeah, interesting observation about his darts. He's just not looked his normal self, Raymond van Barneveld, throughout this game from the moment he walked on. Loves to play to the crowd on the walk-on, but there was a distinct lack of emotion. No playing to the crowd. Deadly serious. No, Game he's face he's... on Barney. Cannot leave a finish. 97. So Barney now looking to set himself up. This is slack again, isn't it? 43. Yeah, I, I, he's flexing his shoulders. I don't know if he's tight or there's. Because I'm thinking now about if he has made a dart change, whether it's a, a just slight, slightly newer dart that has more grip. 97. But it's definitely something. I wasn't, I wasn't making things up about him just pulling different darts out, the, out of his dart case. Robbie require 111. So, this would raise the roof. Trouble 20 would leave double 16. He's not hit the trouble, so Van Barnevel is going to be back here now. This would be some party piece if he could take this out. Well, just not playing well enough to compete for something 60. like that. He has got a 1 1 2. But Cross now 52 to take the lead with the throw. Double 18. Be looking not to go inside to the 18. That is a perfect dart. He's very, very good at that. He throws aggressively at it. He's finishing his excellent way. And look at this from Barney. Yeah, he's, he's finishing his excellent tonight, but that's kind of been one of his downfalls so far in this Premier League. And he's we're talking about him uh, settling, and he's clearly doing that. Yeah, he's only missed one dart at a double rock cross so far tonight. 4-3, he leads. Excellent finishing from both so far. Slack from Barney now. 
Can Cross punish him for that? Another trouble 20 would do him quite nicely. Puts a bit of pressure on Barney, doesn't it? Slack first start again. Can he recover? Needs the trouble, can't do it. Real chance for Cross to kick on now. Yeah, Barney not looking. Like the Barney we know and love. As Cross smacks in his third max. Yep, third 180 for Rob Cross, averaging 98. And here comes Rob Cross for a 5 3 lead to go within a leg of knowing that he cannot be beaten tonight. Double 18. Wow. He could have gone double 18, but on the safe professional side to make sure you go inside. He's good enough to do that. Five. Probably require 56. 56 for Cross now. 4 3 the lead. Can he open up that two leg gap here? Double 18 he needs. Takes that bit of time as he does. There's the target, no problem. Super Rob finishing Cross. from Rob Cross, the world champion. Rob, Five out of six of the double now. And he has the darts here to hold and to guarantee at least a point from Berlin. He's yet to miss double 18, Rob Cross. 46. <laughs> 140. Barney's got to dig deep here against the world champion. He's averaging 95. But the finishing has been excellent tonight 100. from Rob Cross. Looking good for at least a point. Barney hasn't got the mannerisms of a man right now who's going to dig deep, does he? He may, he may. I'm not, I'm not saying he's, he's not going to try, but if it happens, it happens. But it doesn't look to me like he's got the, uh, the eye of the tiger, shall we say. <laughs> 59. He's got a chance, Van Barneveld, with a couple of big scores here to break. But there you go. 65. Can't find a treble, so that, that's just typical of the way the game's been going for Van Barneveld tonight. Nice start, lovely start from Cross. Follows it up brilliantly. There you have it. Fourth 180 for the world champion. Big visit this, big visit this one. Robbie require 160. He loves double 18, so there's no way we'll go for the 57. Well, trouble 20 he went for, for the double 18. Now Van 16. Barneveld to break back and get very much back in this match. Double 80 needs. Off it. Oh, my. Eight. I think he Robbie feels like it's 60. not happening or going to happen. Rob Cross cannot believe that he's back here. 20. Tops. Probably thinking I shouldn't be here now. 40. Barney's thinking I shouldn't be here now. Raymond, you require eight. Barney has dodged two bullets. Work his way in again. Oh, my. He thought that was in. No score. Seven missed out to the double now for Raymond Van Barneveld. 20. Had a marker to use. Couldn't take it. Double 10 for Rob Cross. And Rob Cross has guaranteed another point on the board. Unbeaten in two weeks now after his victory against Peter Wright last week. And now 60. he needs just one more leg to see off Raymond van Barneveld in tonight's Premier League action.
here in Berlin. And Rob apologised for it in that double. 93. <laughs> oh, what's the game come to? A huge result for Rob Cross if he can get another leg on the board and two points instead of one. He'll go above Peter Wright, Raymond van Barneveld himself, who's on three points. This is nice from Cross. Gary Anderson starts his game on two points. Daryl Gurney, Gerwin Price and Mensah Sulevich all on two points tonight now. So it could be a hugely significant result 60. for Rob Cross. Well, after losing in the first two games and then beating Peter Wright and Barney. They're two good wins. 140. There you are. And he's going about his business well. Barney's been real hit and miss. He's only averaging 88 and he do not expect that from RVB. Six starts. Double ten for the match. Rob Eight, Cross, seven, two wins out of two the in the last fortnight. Four. He's dispatched Raymond Van Barneveld in some style. Wonderful finishing from Cross, 70% at the checkout. Four 180s, 96 and a half average. And Rob Cross rockets up the Premier League table on four points now. Tussle to round off the night here in Berlin. Peter Wright against Gary Anderson. How's it going to go, Rod? Well, if Gary Anderson can hit his doubles and he walks up there with scoring power as he did against Michael Van Gerwen, then it's going to be tough for Peter Wright. We know how good Peter Wright is. But just over the last couple of months, he's been a bit indifferent with his form. You know, one game he's OK, another game he's not. He's been changing his darts again. So uh, it's all about this man. If he's on top form, then he's going to be extremely tough to beat. Wright's lost a lot of weight. He had a health problem. Uh, that can affect your throw. It, it can do. It can... It, your position at the hockey, it can affect if you're leaning forward a bit too much, with too much weight, he's probably standing a bit more upright, got a bit more height. Once he gets used to it, I think the endurance, not only, you know, in his mental ability as well, his physical ability, uh, um, is a lot better. I think he's going to feel a lot better once he gets used to it. But at the moment, he's just in that transitional period. He doesn't know what's right for him. He doesn't know the darts are right. Um, and that, what this man's got to jump on. Gary Anderson averaged 110 last week and lost at 170 checkout. I know, it's incredible. <laughs> and he could have beaten Michael if it hit perhaps the three legs where he had darts, but uh, it's all about Gary and what he does. When Marlon and Rod stood in commentary. Thank you, Dave. Yes, Gary Anderson's got a very good record against One Peter Snake by right. Both in the Premier League and in other big tournaments. But the last time they met in a big TV tournament 97. in the Grand Slam of darts, Anderson led 14-8 in a race to 16 and got beat 16-15. I wonder if he's waited a long time for an act of darting revenge, Wayne. Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? It's Peter Wright. Smashes in a maximum. Using different darts again, just a... To... Oh, another! stick with these for any longer than about four legs. No, he'll change and start the next leg. <laughs> now, can he hit? Double nine. Nine? I knew that was going to happen. Nine? Nine. An emergency, perhaps, for Peter Wright, but not in this leg, when Anderson is a mile behind. Do you want me to do that gag again? No. No, nine. I should have said nine. Oh, no. Well, I've got to say, I think Peter Wright has absolutely lost his mind there. I think that was just anger at missing the double nine again. Welcome back to week four of the Premier League and here in Berlin, Michael Smith continued his flawless start with victory over Simon Whitlock. Mensal Sulevich got his first points of the season at the expense of Gerwin Price. A resounding scoreline for the reigning champion, Michael Van Gerwen seven, Darryl Gurney two. Rob Cross made it two wins on the spin as he beat Raymond Van Barneveld. 
and on stage at the moment, Peter Wright and the two-time Premier League winner, Gary Anderson. Gary Commentary Anderson from Wayne Marble and Rod Stark. Gary Anderson One pops up, frozen. takes out the double first dart, something he had trouble doing last week against Michael Van Gerwen. Oh, wow, look at those. Those three darts were as close as you could ever wish to see three darts. You could barely see all three yeah. points they were that close, weren't they? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mentioned that Peter's darts are different. The, the nose of them is, is basically taking up less space. It, it tapers in, and that's why you can get the darts so grouped like that. Well, you don't want to group another one there, I'll tell you. That's it. It's a good switch. <laughs> well, he's hitting a 180 virtually every other scoring turn. Yeah. Literally. Three in, well, what will be two legs now? He won't add to it, but it's his double. He's missed 95. five darts at double. Who do you require one? Can he clean this up? Certainly every chance. Tops. 89. Gary He's playing quicker as well, isn't he? 50. Clearly looking for something. He'll stay there. He'll stay there. Double 15. Oh, my. Gary Anderson. Well, like they say, or like Bobby George says, 180s for show. Scoring for, well, nothing at the moment for Peter Wright. He's doubling. Missed the 109. And then Anderson. So, so just a reminder of that well-worn darting phrase. <laughs> 180s for show, scoring for nothing. <laughs> Just <laughs> rehearse that one. It just trips off the tongue, doesn't it? Fulton. <laughs> Three maximums, but none from six on the double. He could really have thought in 83. nine times out of ten that he would be coming back there because Anderson wanted 150, and the chance of him taking him out was slim. But on this occasion, they were certainly not none. Anderson wow, has hit every Fulton. dart at double he's thrown. Right has missed six. And 2-0 to the Flying Scotsman, who will be thoroughly enjoying this. 96. There's too many times for Peter Wright's liking that he's at a single one first dart. It's at least three or four. He won't like that, because he's normally arrow straight. Tops left, maybe. One run out, Fulton. Well, I hesitate to say it, but surely this time for Peter Wright. He's thrown six at double, he's missed a lot. He wants tops. And there it is at the eighth attempt. That will come with something of a relief to Peter Snape by Wright. One run out. Well, Peter went through a phase like this uh, about a year ago, and what, what phase I mean is the, the speed. Really he's quite rapid for him. Maybe he's just trying to get in the Kind of wow. Gary Anderson mode of throwing. Well, he has wrestled the title of Scottish number one away from his World Cup colleague, hasn't he? Still ranked number two in the world now. Snake bites. Wow. Anderson's dropped down to number four. Rob Cross, the meat in that Scottish sandwich, if yeah. you will. 
very surprisingly, never finished any higher than third in the league. Won it twice, of course. Whole shebang. Treble 18 now. Well, he'd be disappointed there not to at least get a dart at a double. Well, Peter right here with a chance to level up the match. And you would have to say on the balance of play, that would be fair enough. But will it be 2-2? It will indeed. Despite missing eight darts at a double, Peter Wright is level at the match at two apiece. We've had some right a route so far. Game on. Smith beating Simon Whitlock, Mensur beating Gerwin Price. MVG doing a job on Darrell. He's in doubles again, Darrell. And then Rob Cross beating an out of sorts RVB. Goes again, Snakey. One on right out, folks. Three maximums to nil from Anderson, who'd had a dozen before the game started in the Premier League. Daryl Gurney One up to right 17 out, now, despite that defeat to Michael Van Gerwen, leading the way in that regard. We'll see, just below and, and around a ton. Peter right over it now, under it now. You have a wayward dart in this, and that's it. We expect them to be around that wow. and even slightly higher. World Cup pairs partners, of course. One round right 40. Gary requirement 127. 95. Lady requires 70. So to lead for the first time here in Berlin. Going single 20 for double 18. And hitting it. So Peter Wright from 2 0 down to 3 2 in front. And he will feel that he should have won the first two legs anyway. He didn't. He's run three straight as Anderson hits his first maximum of the match. Yeah, especially the first leg was in total control of it. The second leg, fair enough, when Gary took out the 150. Peter only missed one dart at the top. So I think he's been the better player so far. Oh, go on then, another! Come on, Gary! 141 points away from the magical nine. Anderson has had a nine-dart leg in the World Championship. Can he get one in the Premier League too? Well, he's done an MVG from last week against Anderson. When seven treble twenties were followed by a loose dart at the treble 19. Frustrating. 19. Gary required 58. 11 data, possibly. Game show on the sixth leg. Just a holder throw. Just a holder throw, that's all. Welcome back to the Premier League, which is making its debut in Berlin. 12,000 fans packed into the arena and currently enjoying the final match of the night, right against Anderson. Gary Anderson playing well again. When he does, it looks effortless. Peter Wright averaging just below a ton. This is quality. He's frying quick, Peter, isn't he? One hundred and thirty-one. Well, Anderson is ignited now. Mid-match, we're halfway through, three apiece. Will this be the first and only draw of the night? I wonder. We've already seen wins for Michael Smith, Mensa Silovic, Michael Van Gerwen, and Rob Cross. Sixteen. I don't get moving all the way across the hockey just to aim for a 60 when a 51 would have left you a 170. One right Arguably an easier one. finish than what would have been a 161. One oh, yeah. Right oh, yeah. Little fist pump 
as well. Can't finish now. So Wright will have three at double 12 to go back in front in this seesaw struggle. And then it goes. Well, he missed his first seven, didn't he, at double, Peter Wright? And since then, he's hit four out of five. Yes, I know. I know you know because you've got the screen in front of you, but <laughs> some people don't have that facility. That's me. He's sharpened up, hasn't he, on the outer ring? To some tune. Anderson has hit every dart he's thrown at a double in this match. Fascinating contest now. Dominating proceedings, Peter Wright. He's, he's a leg up, but he's a massive odds on to go 5 3 up. When I'm right up Don't forget that first leg where he missed more than a handful of darts at a double. 58. Maybe require 81. Well, to lead by two. Having gone back in front at 4 3, can he make it 5 3? That leaves double 16. And that leaves Peter Wright a leg away from securing at least a point. Two legs away from what would be his third win in the Premier League over Gary Anderson. Yeah, this is what good players do. They turn it round so quick. And especially throwing as quick as he is as well. It just seems like one leg ago and he was in a bit of trouble, but of course, Thrown at the pace he is, he's pulled himself out of trouble very, very quickly. One hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, quality contest. Well, he hit the three one eighties in the first two legs, but look at that meaty scoring yeah. in the one forty plus column, which is added to there as we discuss it, and the the better doubling as well. One hundred and forty. Yes. Uh, seven of those nine missed darts at double were in the first couple of legs. One. It's been a funny Premier League for Peter Wright. He's inflicted defeat on Michael Van Gerwen. He looks like inflicting defeat One. on Gary Anderson, but 34. was beaten by Rob Cross and then really poor in that opening night in Dublin in, lose, in drawing, shall I say, to go in price. He had that strange set of darts, didn't he? Well, he led about 5-1 or 5-2, didn't he? And he did. Well, that was a real late change of mind for Gary. It was the only way to go, but he made up his mind very, very late. We'll get a, a double, you feel. Tops now. Waste no time. This is impressive. It's extremely impressive. The quality of his play, the quality of his scoring, and then in the well, latter well, stages well, of the match, the quality well, of his finishing, and also impressive in his mental approach and mental attitude, Wayne, that he's just shrugged off the, the shenanigans on the doubles in the well, first yeah. couple of legs. If it never even happened. Yeah. That's really impressive. And this is a pace of play that well, he hasn't well, done for a while, well. so to stick with it, to stick with it is good as well. And he just looks in control. And he's looking in control against the man who is so, so difficult to beat. Gary Anderson's averaging 102. He's averaging 104. What price Peter Wright says he played rubbish in the post-match interview? <laughs> what price that? He does like to put himself down, Snakey, doesn't he? This is a really top draw performance. Can Anderson keep the show on the road here? Well, I can't believe that Gary Anderson threw that first start of the 19 with Peter Wright's arm basically still there. That was incredible. Any more hesitation from Peter Wright 
That was so close, that really was. Max, game shot, Max. Wonderful. That's what Gary Anderson's just done. Four all in maximums now. But the most important thing for Anderson is breaking the throw to give himself a chance to throw for a draw from 6-3 adrift. He's at it now. They're just taking it in turns to go oh, at it. Well, here we see. Wow. OK, he was further away than I thought. I made a meal of that. All right, I'll take it back. It was miles away. One hundred and five. Double sixteen. Brilliant leg. Fantastic. Eleven dart leg, and now he's odds on to draw. Well, Anderson here with a furious fight back. From six three behind. Now five six behind. Oh, and now five four in front on the maximums. Would you credit? What a standard. What pace of play. Just an absolute joy to watch. Well, Anderson averaged 110 last week. Lost. He's averaging 106 here, and he's not going to win, whatever happens. Yeah. So to play at that standard, two is running, and at the most he can get is a single point. Yeah. Staggering, really. Yeah, and this isn't done yet. Like you said, Rod. Finally, the night is ignited! Look at that. 105, 105. He's just stuck with his game plan, just wow. stuck with it. He's put Gary in a corner now. One hundred. Did he require 87? Well, for the match. To end a brilliant contest. He wants the bullseye to sink the Flying Scotsman, and he's well, well, well away. That was the slowest start he's thrown all match. 18 or double. Bullseye for a point! Oh, my word! From a seemingly impossible position against the man averaging 105, Gary Anderson runs riot. The last three legs, they were brilliant from Gary Anderson. He cracks in five 180s to Peter Wright's four. 105.25 average. He lost last week with 110. He gets a point. Peter Wright six, Gary Anderson six. That was brilliant darts, guys.